Let's talk today about flats. As the legend go, it's so easy. You just take a white t-shirt, you put it over your scope, you directed it to the bright sky, you check that the histogram is about in the middle and you shoot some photos and your flats are done. And at the end, after you stack, your result is like this. Maybe it's not so easy. So let's have a look what the challenges are when you create flats and how you can do it in a reliable and sustainable manner. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So again, if you produced all these great flats, why would we get a mess like that after stacking? The issue is that the histogram mean must be precise. So having it just approximately somewhere in the middle might just not be good enough. And it might not always be exactly in the middle. Sometimes it has to be a little bit over here, over there. And that depends on your scope and your filter and your setup. Now using the t-shirt blue sky method is hard to control and leads to variable results. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So to stack up on hard and software to get this right and to get it right every time makes a lot of sense. I personally use from a software side Nina and from a hardware side I use such a flat panel. Now when it comes to the flat panel the good part is that you can dim the light. So depending on what filter you have on it for example you can make it brighter or less bright and you can show that every time you do flats you operate with exactly the same brightness, which makes it controllable. Now, if you have a large scope, like myself, an 8-inch made of Casa Grain, you probably have no other way than going with a flat panel, because you do not have another portable screen that just has this size. But if you have a small refractor, your iPad or your notebook screen might do the same trick. But from my point of view, even if you have to buy a thing like that, it costs about $200 max. It's quite worth it because since I'm doing it like that, I get result like this, where there's no vignetting anymore. Now let me show you now in the field how I use the flat panel. Okay, so here you see my scope. So the first thing I do, I slew it manually so that it points exactly against Zenith or in principle that it's horizontal. Then I connect the flat panel and I just put it right on top of it. And that's in principle already everything you have to do. Now let's come to the software. I personally use Nina. There might be other software out there which also has a flat assistant. Now if you do not use Nina for your shooting sessions, that doesn't mean that you cannot download Nina exactly for this purpose, because it's free. Now let's have a look at the computer, how to work with Nina to get to the perfect flats. Okay, we are here in Nina and we went to the flat wizard. In the flat wizard, I can state how many flats I want to take. I say five. Obviously, I would do more if I would do it in reality. Dark flats to take. I also say five for the moment. I want a one by one binning. I, if I would have the telescope connected, I could slew to Zenith. And then I can give them some guidelines. For example, don't make a flat shorter than 0.2 seconds or longer than 20 seconds. So just that it knows. The histogram mean is the middle, 32,000. And then I give, can give them a 10% tolerance. That's all I have to do now. I just have to press play. Now actually Nina evaluates based on the lights that comes from the flat panel what actually the best exposure is to take the flats. You see it tries that now with different exposures. You also see that I might have some dust here on the filter that I get these dots. And now it actually already started taking the flats. You see here two of five, so it takes these. Now that this is done, it tells me to remove my flat panel and to close the lid so that the telescope is dark. And then it does now with the same exposure, the dark flats. And with this, it's actually done. Okay, so that's the whole process. 
So what if after you've done all that, you still have some vignetting on your stacked picture? That means that your mean is off. Remember, Nina sets the mean of the histogram as a default in the middle. And in most cases, that works fine. But given your setup, it might be that the mean has to be a little bit to the left or to the right of the histogram. So if you still have vignetting, just try it out in Nina. Just move the mean, make a new series of flats and stack it until it's perfect. Because the great part is, this is fully reproducible. So once you have your perfect setting, you can always do it again and again and again. And you will always have perfect stacked pictures without any vignetting. I hope that helped. If you liked my video, please subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up. See you next time in clear skies.